So we honor our Kua who, who has created that space and time for you and I to exist here. And you know, us guys, uh, we limited. We are on time clock. <laughs> so because we're on time clock, we got to do everything that we've been brought forth into this earth to do. And do it with everything. And do it with the strength of heaven at your back, within you, and that force that comes out from you. So the Akua moves through a physical body that heals himself the right away for the Akua move in the earth. That's why we do what we do. We bring everything alive without taking too much time. I do want to say that this is Kupuna Sam Kai, a man that is uh, very much revered throughout Hawaii for who he is and for that space and time that he has held so faithfully for so many years. So I'm going to get off the stage and I'm going to rap the Kupuna Sam Kai Kapalau with you folks. I greet here the farmers, the planters. Now we're going to talk about a sequence of rhythms that is now. This month in Stuartition, 200 years of the fixing of the Hawaiian language to a Bible form. Tribes had different points of view, and I come from one that is in Kaupo, but everything had to be written to mean a single meaning. Native people have many meanings for a word. It's how you braid the sentence that the meaning is taken on. But with the European idea, you have to fix the meaning of a word forever because it's contract law. Pharaoh said it, it was written and it is so. It's the basis of communism. In Hawaiian, it is said, it is sung. The next generation dances and then it's alive. The memory of passing qualities are this. Today, a biorhythm is ending. 100, uh, 200 years of that fixing of the language and then 140 years of one crop for cash. Not to feed, strictly to make money. Those things now are the fields we're standing on, the sugar fields, pineapple fields. This biorhythm is changing across the entire world, not just Hawaii. But from a Hawaiian point of view, taro is a base crop. How old is it? 6,000 years since man has been involved with that product that pursues calcium. It is the other thing from milk. When the Hebrews walk across the desert and milk goats, you have the milk idea. Taro is the other portion of calcium. And it's coming back into vogue. Uh, Many people talk about dry land taro and wetland taro. Well, that's kind of a misnomer. Taro cannot grow where it does not rain. Hmm? And wet paddocks are not about feeding the plant. Wet paddock is about controlling the weeds. 80% uh, of all grasses cannot grow on the water. So a stick with a hook on it and another one to beat is how you scoop the grass and hit. There's no sickle involved in the Neolithic point of view. You break the grass, you step it down into the water and it drowns. Its roots are always wet, easy to pull and throw on the bank. So wet farming is not about watering really, but about weed control. Farmers understand that. It's the, it's the thing that bothers them while they get into the point of view of their fruit. Mahua. I come from a place on this island People know it as Kaupo, but I come from a place called Mahua. It means the fruit. And so what fruits are coming in vogue that were out of vogue for about 140 years? Kalo. Now why taro at all? Calcium is the base of it. One slice, two inches thick, is equivalent to half a gallon of milk. 
a different kind of point of view. China today is going to a meat protein people. Yet all of those countries got their protein out of vegetable. Soybean is one of them. Yeah? But I'd say the, uh, these rhythms are seeming to perk up and they're showing up in your company. The idea of uh, something native and something old. We tend to talk about Hawaii uh, Kapena Kuki or Captain Cook and Kamehameha. Why? Because everybody else showed up at the same time. There is a 2,000 year history in this place. It's a strange place. And where is a lay called the Pacific Ocean? Te Moana Nui. And it's 2,000 miles from absolutely anywhere. Okay. There are some reasons that we should pay attention and remember we're island people. Around the world, our same unit is deserts. Sahara, Indian Desert, Arabia, uh, the ones in California, and the Gobi Desert. Hawaii turns green because it's higher than the lower clouds. So a cloud hits it, it rises up, changes its temperature, and it starts to rain. So there's a prayer. It might have something to say right now. Kamea, 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 kaua. Kamea, 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 kawai. Kamea, kamea, kakai. Kamea, kamea, kaholo, kalani. Kana. Somebody else's song. Except in that song, Kamea Kamea means this, that, and everything. <laughs> and the rain. With the rain comes a green island instead of a desert island. Koholavi is that kind of desert island. Eh? They're too low to catch the clouds. That means more rain falls on the island than around the island in the sea. Those are where your foundations as farmer lie. Right. Kamea Kaua. Ovai. Well, that's water. Why should we think that water is that important? Because you're 80% water. Without that, you wouldn't be alive. Okay? Uh, uh, when I was child, I asked, well, what's the heck of all of this? You know, ask my kuku uh, kane. By the way, Hawaiians say kuku kane, kuku wahine for grandparents. And then the Europeans said, oh, you were born in a cuckoo clock. <laughs> so all of a sudden it became tutu kane, <laughs> and it named after the Tahitian dialect. So some things change as people use it, and it becomes humorous or vexing. This concept of vai said, well, nana ikala, or the sun, is the heat and the day. Everything too close to it burns. The two planets closer doesn't have anything. Anything beyond us has another kind of atmosphere. We have vai, water, and oxygen. So ha, aloha is breath of life. So another little prayer you say, Hapai ke limalu, or take, he, take these up in the hollow of your hand, O oh Lord. Breathe the short breath for work, for running, for dancing, for movement. And then the long breath for contemplation, meditation, and prayer. And then the breath forever and ever and ever and ever. They have more. Yeah? It means beyond the body. Simple prayers reveal codes of conduct. Um, we're talking about a changing uh, rhythm that that kind of plantation is going out of business. And then there's these funny people. They want to be farmers. They laugh while they sing the song of the aching body and yet of the joy of the fruit. You are those people. Some of you are playing exotic crops like chocolate and things of that sort. 
Others are going back to Kalo, the basic picture. Now, why again is that? Okay. okay. Um, that and sweet potato is a base culture for most of the world. We only measure European culture of wheat, patient milk. They're very small groups, really. Abraham's goats were milk in the beginning of their culture. But out here in Maya, 6,000 years ago, several fruits came to bear. One of them is taro, and that's calcium. The other one is uala. It has more fiber, A, B, and C. It has trace elements of all kinds of things that make it, uh, if you're diabetic, and, and switch away from rice and flour and get into sweet potatoes, you'll be healed. So some of these things are lurking among you farmers. Babi Paia has a dream. After four years, he told it to me. <laughs> uh, he's a very quiet man. But his idea is to see if Tuesday or Thursday can be affixed as a day for poi in school for calcium. And so, so planting that in mass. Okay? They got a little magic going where they take a fish head, guts, fish head, grind them all up, put it into a container, about a 300 gallon container, 200 gallons of it, and then they cover it with six inches of raw sugar. They let that thing ferment. It comes out looking like molasses. And it can be trickle feed and taro, I know something about taro. Put in the ground that tall will be this tall in three months. Okay? One of the things that is magical to the ancient rhythm is that taro is immediately attacked by a bug and the leaves turn into chantilly lace. The first leaf is always like that. The second one, mm, two thirds like that. About the fourth one, it might be about an eighth. After that, there are few leaves. In other words, the plant has the weed uh, insect control. Its acid that we find, we have to cook, otherwise we get it too. Uh, that changes and eats up and changes that whole atmosphere of that field. That's why it's an ally of man for 6,000 years. Is that some of those things now are being planted. And their dream of having Tuesday or Thursday a poi day in Hawaii is sympathetic, at least to the native population. So we're going to an energy period. Right now is the beginning of Makahiki. There are four months when Ku is stand down and Lono is right up. There are four keys in the region. The long image that you see with the fine banners is the collective period, which is now. It's not tax yet in the books they'll tell you. It's the Hawaiian taxation. It's proof that you are a farmer. If you cannot produce that, that place is not well. So they come and look at all the bushels, <laughs> all food. If it wasn't produced, somebody was lazy. <laughs> period. Okay. So <laughs> under that, they start to shout. Everybody says it's a time of peace. Nothing hard happens. But they have this prayer. They shout, Ahi kahale, burn the house. It sounds awful if you're a Westerner. But what they're saying, if you were lazy, then you must be uncomfortable. So burn the house. When you burn the house, what happens? First you have to go and put a house to put the babies back in. And then the grannies. Everybody else is sleeping outside. Real quick, the village changes, reactivates, and plants everything again. Be building the village, a renewal. That's what you celebrate in uh, November. December has a counting. That's when Makali'i shows. Uh, that's our calendar. But we don't share this. I mean, it's not exclusive to ours. In Mexico, it's called Umbasku. In Japan, it's called Sibaru. It's called the uh, Six Sisters Hippolytes. We call it Makalini, the small eyes. To 
wake up again to the rhythm. Yeah? These things are written on the wind and, and sung by a thousand generations before me. And first people all over the world seem to have that same start to start their calendar. It should be a time to collect how many nations use that and how we've gone to the atomic clock and some other kind of measurement and forgotten that rhythm. So, Bakiti is a time of death. Now, it's also the time when the man with the kui or abs that shapes the world. By the way, the highest uh, kind of civil position in Hawaii is called Kalaimuku. Okay? The shaper of the world. Today, in Hawaii, we say, oh, the shaper of the world is the guy who puts up the banking money. He shapes the world. But in Hawaii, you sharpen your ads, retie it, and with a piece of wood, you make a canoe and go and see the rest of the world. It was a hollow statement until just lately when they rebuilt Hokulea and took it around the world with no sort of vision. When we were in the governor's mansion after we had lost Eri Aikau, we were asked uh, several psychiatrists talked to us. They said the same thing three different ways. And one guy did it in Pigeon, which I thought was uh, doing something. <laughs> then a man with shorts and a polo shirt, gray hair, got up and said, I hope you realize that that vessel can never be certified as a seagoing vessel. And this ends now. He was a retired admiral. His discipline came out of uh, Naples. Perhaps the worst thing I ever did was put up my hand like a child and said, you know, I want to say something. And everybody said, I wish, you know, they wanted to get everybody in the room to eat, to cool this thing off. My response to him is, without Arabic numbers, Greek mathematics, Portuguese instruments, Dutch charts, and English chronometer, we will find our way. Stop saying non-instrument navigation. It sounds okay in Manoa campus, but it's wayfinding. And if it takes 10 generations, we will find our way from Hawaii Ahi, Hawaii of the Flame, to Hawaii Ite, called Rayetea, then turn west to Savai in Samoa, then up the Bismarck Archipelago, all the way in New Caledonia, New Ireland, to a place called Hava. We call, you call it Java. And then up the Malacca Straits, where there's an island called Molokai. And then there are two rivers, the Indi and the Ganges. There's a Tigris and the Euphrates, the Yangtze and the Yalu. That's where we came off the land, on those rivers, uh, naval sailing, shipbuilding occurred. We're just the end of that story. Hukulea is the end of the story. By the way, when Hukulea was first uh, perceived, it didn't have the name Hukulea. It was called Manu Akau, the North Bird, in obedience to an ancient murmur. It will go down from Hawaii Ahi, Hawaii of the Flame, to Hawaii Ite at Rayatea, in obedience to an ancient song. You people are making an ancient song come alive. Some of you will say, well, you know, exotic fruits, they're lively. That fruit has lipstick on. There's some basic fruits that are the very bones that hold you there, and the very waters that make you laugh. That is what farmers represent. So, along Kamahi Ai, oh, give greetings to the one who bends down, embraces the earth, and calls the Hua to bear fruit. All of these rhythms are changing. All over the world, there's a place in uh, Sweden where a 14 year old got up, walked to her nation's capital, and stood there for 19 days with nobody else. She had something to say. She thought her business was going to school, but she would not be alive if her parents did not cure the carbon problem. 
the piston engine has to disappear in 12 years or we will have hotter and hotter and hotter summers. Greater burns, and it's the rhythm in California has been going on for a while. Now it's reaching proportions where you can jump half a mile just by a spark. We now have people turning off the electric power. When those cables expose and burns, uh, birds land on it, they die. That's okay, you didn't see that. But when your house burnt, well, now everybody turn off the power. You understand? You gotta have a crisis to approach a problem in a new way, or perhaps in an old way. Hmm? That's the rhythm. The idea of planting taro is to fish it. Now, there's another reason that I, anybody here over, was around in 1948? Okay, I was 10 years old. Saw several things that were very ugly. We had a strike for 180 days, and toilet paper was gone in 29 days. There's a lot more people here now on the earth. A lot more food that's necessary. So making exotic foods like chocolate. By the way, we grew chocolate as a kid. I found it something bitter. Never liked it. You have to put a lot of sugar in it, right? But these are these rhythms that seem to be waking up with your assembly. Uh, one of the joys of being a child is, uh, you know, miso soup. And uh, the broth is important, right? You get the beef, you put it in a bag, you boil it for two days, better, and you get that broth, see? Well, one of the things that were plentiful in Kaupo, perhaps not now, was a big koe, uh, big opihi. We used to take the stomach and dip little hooks in it and dry it on a burning leaf so the ladies can cook fish on the tidal pools. That's their hobby. Uh, the men don't want them close to the edge of the wave, get hold of them, so stay on the shallow water. But the bigger part of the opihi was put with a bag needle and dried. And about uh, two, three weeks, uh, if you cut slice, and you make the dashi for the miso soup. Very, very good. It's a kind of a two cultures colliding. It came just about the time when hee became taco. Understand it? The language changed, depending on who was the fisher. Well, you're going to change the language, but the base core is those basic tropical foods necessary for the day stop. Now everybody said, whoa, whoa, what are you talking about history? Tidal waves are not if they're coming, but when they're coming. Cutting off islands, we were a lake called the Pacific Ocean. We're the green pot. If you're not planting things there, it won't be there when you're cut off. I don't want to talk about the negative, but I want to say that it does exist, and it's not if it's coming, it's when it's coming. Island people know that. There's other people coming, whoa, we found this beautiful place. We need to make some adjustments here, we need to go to school, and we need to have a poi day Thursday or Tuesday every day. Woo!